joining and um we'll start recording all right um we do have quite a few people that have joined us already so that's great uh my name is gary sparrow i'm the membership director at the henry county chamber of commerce and this is another one of our webinars we're getting out to uh our members and just the community trying to uh, help people with the uh situation we're in the um COVID-19 uh, crisis and just trying to to help all we can with uh, operating through this uh, through this crisis. So this morning we have a great panel. We're going to be talking about um, being um, uh, we got some great questions uh, for our panel and uh, we're just going to talk about being productive working from home because I know a lot of people are working from home now. We have some experts that have been doing this a long time. They've been working from home before all this started. And, uh, and then we'll uh, also, there's something new for me. I haven't done it before. So hopefully we can help you out. So we have on our panel this morning, we have Laura Turner with Children's Health Care of Atlanta. Hey, Laura. Uh, Josh Murtha with US Health Advisors. Uh, April Brum with Send Out Cards. And Taylor Welch with Connecting Henry. And then we have Doug Bates with CMIT Solutions. Hey, Doug. Uh, Doug's the IT guy, so he can help us with any technical type questions you may have. And uh, we're just going to go through some questions uh, this morning. Then at the end, we'll give you an opportunity to uh, to ask some questions. If you can use the chat or the uh, Q and A um, process there, and type in any questions that you might have, and we will get to those kind of at the end. Uh, so I'm going to start out right now with just kind of um, with a home office. How did you set it up? um you know where your workspace was going to be and thinking about doing video things like this and lighting and uh background and things like that so laura we'll just kick it off with you just kind of uh what were your thoughts there when you were setting up a home office well thank you gary that's something that um the panelists and i have been talking about yesterday and today was um some of the challenges i've had because whenever i set up my home office a couple of years ago i wanted a, a pretty cozy um enjoyable office to work from and i had no idea that video capabilities were going to become so um so important so one of the challenges i've had these last few weeks since we've been doing zoom calls and webexes is I have this giant, beautiful window behind my desk. Um, and so it's definitely, at the first couple of calls, I think I looked like I was in the witness protection program because all you could <laughs> see was the silhouette of my head. So um, I have some interesting lighting happening in here right now so that y'all can actually see me, but um, I love my blue walls too much to change them. So hope, hoping this won't last forever, but lighting definitely important. All right. Anybody else? Josh, Josh, you got a great background there behind you. I like that. There's some windows, but they're way off in the back, so it doesn't affect the lighting too much. No, uh, well, I mean, I, I said uh, my location changes depending on how I feel. Uh, so sometimes I'm in an office, sometimes I'm at a kitchen table, sometimes I'm outside. Uh, so definitely lighting does play a part depending on where I'm at. Uh, right now, I'm actually in my home office, and I've got a window behind the computer screen, but the windows actually the uh, you know, lights actually shining on my face, but you know, because I move, I like to keep some consistency in my video. So I actually use with Zoom a virtual background, uh, which I was able to customize. So kind of makes it easy. Great. Anybody else? Sure. Okay. Um, so mine is anywhere with good lighting. I think okay. that's a common thread, but a natural lighting where you can get the sunlight. I love to be outside. Um, I love to just have a workspace outside. I tried to do that this morning, um, but then my neighbor started doing yard work. So I had to quickly change. <laughs> um, so finding somewhere that's quiet as well. And I probably should have thought of that going forward, of the possibility that if I'm outside, there's probably going to be more distractions in terms of noise. And that wouldn't be fair to anybody else listening to this. So just finding somewhere that has the potential to be quiet for long term. Great. April? So yeah, um, I've got a window over here and um, my, I have the advantage of quiet in my house. Uh, my husband's a pilot and my kids are grown just about, so we don't have um, a lot of the distractions. I think um, folks are noticing now, especially working from home, there's so many new challenges. Um, if you worked from home before, 
um, things were a lot different than they are right now. People have, you know, elementary kids running around or, you know, suddenly dogs are barking and things like that, that, that weren't normally a distraction before. So I think people are finding new ways to, um, to do it. This wall has always been here. A friend of mine put it together and designed it for me. I, I don't have this ability. Um, I don't have that gene. <laughs> she comes and makes things pretty for me. Um, and so I just love it. It's peaceful for me. There's a lot of natural light in my house, which as Taylor said, that is key um, to being able to um, not be a distraction. I think sometimes when I'm conducting Zoom meetings and things, sometimes mine are uh, with people in other countries. Um, and so you wanna make sure that people are focusing on the subject matter and not on what's going on around you. So that's really important to keep those distractions down. That's true. That's true. Doug, anything you want to add? Well, as I've mentioned, I, prior to being in IT, I was a resident sales rep. So I've been uh, in a virtual office, if you will, for about 30 years. Um, and started back when, you know, you had to keep the dog from barking when you're on your telephone. Um, and, you know, it's just really critical. I think, as Taylor said, you've know, you got to have a quiet space, someplace that you can sequester and be focused on your work. Because if you're distractions um, can cause a lot of problems. And our rule was uh, in the space that I had, I had a you know bedroom in the basement or that we turned into an office and I just had the door closed. And if the door was closed, I was working and they had to knock or they had to come back if it wasn't, you know, only knock when it was critical. So we had also not only get some places quiet, but you have to manage expectations of those in your household or in your space so that they know that you're working. I mean, there's some great videos out there of cats and dogs, you know, ruining are, are jumping <laughs> videos and horses and, and all sorts of stuff. And that's funny, but it's not productive. So unless you're gonna monetize that on Instagram, you need to you know make sure that you have some boundaries set. Yeah, that's true. And, and I know, I think everybody right here is sitting in front of a computer, but a lot of people I know use their phones for this stuff. And I'm terrible, you know, I was FaceTiming with my wife the other day when she was out of town. And uh, so we're, I'm on my phone and it's just, natural. I'm not sitting down. I'm walking around pacing, talking. And she said, would you stop? I keep seeing everything go around. So I, I mean, that's something you got to think of too when you're on your phone. It's more mobile, but you know, if you're on a meeting or something like that, it can be distracting if you're walking around, you know, uh, using that as well. And I think everybody saw the video of the, the lady the other day that went to the bathroom while she was on a Zoom meeting, but uh, yeah, not I'll thinking. So. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, uh, so yeah, it is important. So thanks for all those, uh, suggestions uh next we have how do you set a schedule while while working at home like a you know time managing your time i know it's easy to you know get off doing something else i know i've, I've been bad about that since i've been working from home and some is get you know doing something that needs to be done around the house right quick and and just not managing that time but also you know taking some breaks and not just sitting in front of the computer the whole time so uh let's start with josh how about uh what do you do as far as setting a schedule for working at home, Josh? I think it's about finding balance uh, and being flexible. Um, so go into it with a set schedule. Be willing to adjust it. Uh, if you're if what you're doing for work allows you to work abnormal hours, that's awesome. Um, you don't have to be confined to a nine to five, um, but get creative with it. Set something, uh, you know, time wise. Uh, you can set many little goals or quotas or whatever it is based on or, or completions uh, that you need to get done, but schedule breaks. Uh, you need time away from a computer. I love technology, but I can't sit in front of a computer all day. Uh, I'm used to being out networking, talking to people face to face. So as much as I've been using uh, these virtual platforms for pretty much as long as I've been in health insurance, uh, it's still a challenge, uh, but you've got to be flexible with it. Uh, I know uh, like April mentioned, we're facing challenges today that even us that have been working virtually for a while, uh, you know, I'm normally doing it without kids at home, without a right. wife at home most of the time. Uh, but two of us are uh, teleworking and we've got kids in the household uh, and trying to balance all that. So it's, it's definitely, I say, keep it flexible. Uh, try something. If it doesn't work, adjust it um, and just go from there till you find what works for you. That's good. Yeah. Sounds good. Anybody else? So I have this. 
Oh, I got yeah. it off Amazon. It I highly rec. It is it is bar none one of my favorite my, sort of um, productivity tools. Okay, it's called. I think you would search hexagon timer. Is this a hexagon? Somebody math wise help me. Right. Um, so <laughs> it's just and you see how it sits right right now. It says zero at the top and it's just got the time. But if I needed a 15 minute timer, you simply turn it to the 15 minutes and it starts counting down. It is that quick. And so it really just saves me. I bought a stand up desk, one of those that just kind of goes up. Like Josh said, your body does not need to be sitting more than a certain amount of time at a time. Um, so physically, a lot of us that are suddenly at home that like Josh said, I'm used to going and going. And so we've got to take care of our bodies while we're taking care of our businesses. Um, and part of that is getting up, setting timers, you know, staying mobile, even in your house. If you got to run the stairs, run the stairs, you know. <laughs> um, but yeah, definitely we have an obligation to our family and to our customers and clients to, to stay at the top of our game. So yes, I'll, I'll post the link to it, Laura. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's super cool. I just love it. That'll be great. Yeah, it was <laughs> unintentional too. I saw it and I went, huh. Yeah, you know, anybody can set a timer. You can tell Alexa to set a timer, but sometimes you forget. And when it goes off, it kind of makes you get up. So anyway, hope idea. that helps. <laughs> Absolutely. Taylor, how about you? And you're in with Connecting Henry. How are you managing your schedule? Sure. So mine is a little bit different um, where I make sure I'm available during regular business hours. Um, all of our phones are forwarded to our cell phones. If anyone calls the office, of course, it's going to ring on our phone. So we're still available in case anyone does call or need us. Um, but part of that at the same time as what April and what Josh is saying, like we have to get up and we have to move around because normally if I was in the office all day long, I'm with students a lot of times. So I'm moving around, I'm going places, I'm networking a lot. So there's also movement. So when I'm at home, I cannot just sit in front of a computer screen all day long where it's just like, draining. So for me, I make sure I take not only a lunch break, but an active lunch break. Um, so that could be something different where I like to go for a run a lot of times or go for a walk around the neighborhood just to get out and start moving so I can get fueled back so I can come back and finish up strong for the rest of the day. So that's how I have been doing this since I started working from home a couple of weeks ago. Okay, great. Doug, how about you? You know, just echoing what everybody else is sharing, you got to have a, a, a routine or a rhythm, um, something so that you can set aside. You know, if you're a morning person, stay a morning person. Uh, if you're an afternoon person, stay an afternoon person. Don't try and change. Um, you know, you have to have some flexibility, but, you know, you've got to be productive so that you're taking care of your business and your clients and, and being productive. You know, one thing um, I do, I always usually have, uh, you know, if you're used to an office environment where there's people or a lot of activity, you know, put a radio station on in the background for white noise. Uh, you know, sometimes that quiet can get uh, subconsciously can wear on you. Um, mm -hmm. You know, the other thing, you know, switching on to, to IT, you know, you've got to make sure you have, you know, a lot of people, we get a lot of calls here. Oh, you know, my, uh, my computer's not very fast. I don't know what the problem is. Well, they're on ATTU verse or they've got DSL. You know, they don't have the right bandwidth to try and work remotely whether they're, they're remoting into, you know, we remote a lot of people back into their office, into their server. And so they've got to have, if they're, it doesn't matter if their office has a lot of bandwidth, if you've set up and everything looks perfect and you've got drawn DSL, you're not going to be very productive. Um, or your kids are streaming um, in the background. you got a lot of music and videos going in the background and they're chewing up all the bandwidth. Um, and you've got a consumer service, even a Comcast, you know, that bandwidth is shared. And so sometimes that can impact. And so you those are the things that a lot of people have never given any thought to because if they were buffering before, they just put their phone down and go do something else. Well, now they're working, they're trying to work and they can't afford that. So they've got to, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes we've had some that schedule their kids. You can watch movies from, you know, from noon to two, um, but then I've got to have the bandwidth the rest of the day. So stuff like that, you've got to be cognizant of, um, you know, multiple screens. Um, make yourself more productive. A lot of people are trying to work off just a laptop when they're used to working on two or three <clears throat> affects their impacts their their productivity um, so just stuff like that you're trying to make it as mirror it as much like your office environment as you can so your productivity is the same or better 
Uh-huh. That's great. I, I didn't really even think about that, but you're right because we've seen even some, especially at night, we've got our grandkids over here and they're, you know, on both on iPads and we're doing a lot of different things and things are slowing down. I know a lot more people are using Wi-Fi and using things at home that aren't usually doing it. So yeah, also those, they're plugging in a voice over IP phone, which uses bandwidth. And so then the call crackles or the calls will drop. Um, because you don't have the bandwidth and you're doing other things with some support. And so you people are like, what? I can't, you know, and you're not even on your cell phone and they still can't hear you. So right. the bandwidth matters. Absolutely. Great, great idea. Laura, anything to add? Just, I know myself and I know that I need a routine. I need a schedule, but I also try to show myself a little bit of grace because, um, you know, I don't have commute time. Um, I'm a morning person, so I wake up early. I, I start answering emails about seven o'clock in the morning. So it gives me a little bit of grace if that mom guilt hits me mid afternoon and I want to go for a walk or go for a golf cart ride with the kids. You know, I, I feel like I've already had a very productive part of my day. And, and you know, thanks to cell phones and, and laptops, we can always be connected. So I would say just just give yourself some grace because you are, um, when you're focused completely on work all day, you are being a lot more productive without water cooler talk and yep. uh, long lunches and that type of thing. Yep, 40% of all uh, lack of productivity is driven by interruptions. Mm -hmm. um, so you're exactly right if you're by yourself. And the only other thing I would add, if I may, is when you're gonna do that kind of thing, it really helps to say, okay, I'm gonna work these two hours and then I'm gonna take an hour off. Don't try and multitask between your work and your home because that usually, you can multitask at work and you can multitask at home, but when you try and cross over, that's when you tend to forget stuff, especially on the business side. It's okay if you forget to give your kids a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, but it's not okay to forget to send out a quote or you know, respond on a check or place an order or something like that. So you just gotta try and sequester. All right, great. Um, well, I did have the a next question about kind of distractions. I think we kind of covered that a little bit. Um, and now one of the things I know April mentioned it with, with Josh as well, is a lot of people are at this point, things that are different are they've got kids at home and they're having to do schoolwork and teach on top of everything else. So Josh, I know you and your wife are both working and have kids. So how are you managing that? Uh, that's definitely been an interesting challenge. Um, and it's been something we've had to learn to, ad again, adjust and be flexible with. Um, when we first started, it was just kind of whoever could get to it and, and do it. Uh, and again, back to the setting the schedule, uh, we've kind of adjusted. Uh, so I've kind of set in my schedule that Mondays and Wednesdays are my days, uh, to kind of work with the kids and be, that be my focus, uh, which allows me Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. Um, so the focus can be on you know, making sure I've got everything done. It doesn't mean that I neglect on Mondays and Wednesdays my work, uh, but it, the, it's going to be more flexible. So if I have a client call in, um, you know, I shoot them a text back, hey, I'm in the middle of something. I'll call you as soon as I have the opportunity or we can schedule an appointment for one of the other days I'm working. Um, so I'm not necessarily neglecting the work. And so I'm still communicating with clients. It's just a matter of having to set priorities. Those are my days to, to make sure that my son's doing his schoolwork, that my three-year-old's entertained and allowing him to do his schoolwork, as well as allowing my wife to focus on work. Uh, and so two, the other two days, on um, Tuesdays and Thursdays, that's her focus. So she's actually downstairs right now with the kids. Uh, I've been on Zoom meetings since eight o'clock this morning. Um, so this is my second one. I've got an appointment after I get off here. Um, and so it's just, again, adjusting, you know, and being flexible with it. It's taken a couple of weeks to do it uh, and balancing that school. Uh, so again, it's, hey, even with school, we have a schedule. There's different times we're doing, we've got Google Meet. So I've got downstairs where I'll have my son do his stuff is at the kitchen table. And we have got a schedule posted up for him. Of, here's a Google class time. Here's what time we're going to work on this. Here's breaks built in for him. And so it's a, a lot schedule driven, but it's again, working, trying to piece it all together. And it's been adjustments over time. It was not like what we're doing today is what we were doing three weeks ago. It's not absolutely. Same. That's true. Anybody else have kids at home, working, school, Laura? Yeah, How are you handling it? I, I am like Josh. I have kids at home, but I also have a spouse at home working too. So <laughs> we 
we've always, um, both of us work from home and uh, we have two separate workspaces. So that helps because he's on calls all day and it's a little loud. So if, if that's your situation, I would definitely recommend two, two workspaces for that reason. Um, but because we have always worked from home, our kids, even though now they're in middle and high school, they've always had, you know, we've been pretty firm about our expectations. Whenever we're in our office working, um, I always say, is someone bleeding or throwing up? Um, like, don't. <laughs> yeah. um, now that they're a little older, they can text me and say, he's picking on me. But, um, uh, you know, just having some firm expectations, even whenever they're a little, um, you know, maybe they're, they're a different type of expectation. But I like your idea of schedules for them, too, Josh. That's, that's good advice as well. Well, really, yeah, it gives, right. it gives them else? something to expect, too, which is mm -hmm. nice. Yeah. And I think too, from um, my side of things, because I don't have kids at home or anything like that, um, but I am the assistant program director for a GED program. So I'm kind of on the admin side of things. Um, and I'm also teaching for the GED as well. So I can fully <laughs> understand the parent struggle for sure. Um, but a couple of different sides of this, like as an admin side, in case we have anyone watching, um, just be transparent and communicate with the parents and let them know that this is new for everyone and it's new mm -hmm. for us. Um, but just to make yourself available for the parents or even for the students and as a teacher, not to overwhelm them. Because initially when I first started the Google Classroom, I was starting out work left and right. And I found out that that was overwhelming because something that I did for the students was ask them, hey, what's working? What isn't working? What do you want to see differently? How can I be better? Um, because I don't really know. This is new for me, just like it's new for you. So be in communication with the students, but for the parents as well. Be in communication with them and be a support system. Um, yeah. Let them know that you are in this with them. Give them your email. Give them your phone number. Maybe have virtual office hours where they can call and ask you questions or customize the work for some of the students because not all the students are learning at the same pace as the other ones are, especially if they're not in a traditional classroom. Um, but just being real and transparent and honest and be okay with making some mistakes, but recovering from them as well. Yeah. And from the parents side, I, you know, I just like to add that, uh, make sure you're, you know, dealing with all this. I know that was a, a frustration with us at the point at the first is going, how hey, there's no way between these Google meets and the amount of classwork you're handing out that two functioning full-time, <laughs> you know, people and trying to deal with a seven-year-old and a three-year-old that anybody can get this done. I was like, we're working with the kids and there's no way they could finish this in a normal day. Um, and we're giving them one-on-one -on -one attention. And so, <laughs> You know, communicating that with, with the teachers as well and, you know, have them understand, hey, it's taken us eight hours to do what you should have been able to get done in six. And, and that's just one of the classes. So um, we're not so supposed to say, you're smart enough, it's fine. Oh, yeah. Well, I can't, I don't leave a seven-year-old to his own whim for his gifted <laughs> class and regular class. He's smart, but he's not that smart. Um, uh, and so, you know, try just, I think, communicate with the teachers as well uh, about the workload. Uh, understand, hey, you know, trying to keep up with this difficult where do we need to prioritize our time uh, i know that that's allowed him to go okay well he's in the gifted program he doesn't need to be in this class or th participate in this but he needs to be on this and he needs to focus on x y and z uh, which allowed us to pull some off of our plate uh, i also know that we also um got with the teacher as well as about trying to post next week's lessons on Friday, now uh, the school public school system here in Henry County has gone to where Friday's kind of like a catch up day. Yeah. Uh, so we do take advantage of that, but we're also doing some of the classwork on the weekends when neither one of us have to work. So one of us can sit down with him and work on Saturday or Sunday doing classwork, which frees up a day during the week for us. So yeah. the seven year old can play with the three year old, which makes life a little easier. Oh, yeah, because nobody knows what day it is anyway. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like what? But, but now it's spring break, so. Uh, <laughs> right, yeah. So what does that look like? You got a whole week to catch up. <laughs> oh, yeah. He's going to be doing schoolwork this week to make next week easier. I promise. <laughs> That's a good idea. That's great. Great information. Um, great way to handle those different things. Um, so next we have, and uh, anybody that wants to jump in here, uh, we kind of talked about different adjustments we've had to make. <clears throat> Uh, I think all of us have had to do that. Uh, but also managing people from your home. If you're, you know, you have a group that you have to manage, um, how do you handle that? How do you keep them on task? How do you keep track of what they're doing? Um, Laura, let's jump in uh, with you on that right off the bat. 
Right. Well, I have a team of eight and they are spread out all over Metro Atlanta. And even before this, we all work, you know, remotely. So we're, we're used to that aspect, but we're all very extroverted and very much used to being on the go. So this has um, uh, been a real challenge for some of them. I mean, seriously, uh, we I, I sent the link to Amy's Thursday webinar about mental health because we all need to um, listen to that. But I'll, I'll be honest, some of the things that I thought were cheesy at the beginning of this, some of the little tips that people would give about, you know, how to stay connected with your team and how to make conference calls fun. I thought they were silly whenever they first suggested it. And now I'm like, okay, Friday's meetings, a special guest Friday. Um, just trying to keep things a little bit more lighthearted. So yeah, we're starting our Friday call off with um, a special guest. It can be two-legged, four-legged, stuffed animal, whatever. Um, and I know that sounds stupid, but it really does set the tone for the weekend and, and just kind of eases us up, eases up a little bit. Um, but on the flip side of that, we also have, um, we have some goals for the week. We, we lay them out on Friday, what our goals are for next week. And they're not crazy goals. It's just like, okay, we're all, we're going to all reach out to our board members next week and just check on them. Um, so it keeps us, keeps us focused on a common mission and goal for the, for the upcoming week and sets the tone for our work. Great, great idea. Uh, Doug, I think you have a, a group as well that uh, you probably have to manage, right? Yeah, we, um, you know, we have eight technicians, on, uh, eight on our technical staff and two on our admin staff that do the dispatching. And um, since we have two technicians that are still working in the office um, because we've got plenty of room and um, can follow the guidelines and they didn't have a situation at home that they were comfortable working in without distraction. One of them has eight kids, so he decided to stay in the office. I don't think he's like, I just, I don't even want to try. I just I to fight that. Battle. I'll blame him. Yeah. But uh, well, I told him that the funny thing was, you know, you can't do 10 or more. So I said, you know, good thing you didn't have one more kid. And he said, well, my third oldest daughter volunteered to leave if we needed her to. So, <laughs> um, but so we've gone, we were all in the, in the office, except for when we were on dispatch, because in a very collaborative environment amongst the technicians solving problems to try and get fast responses back to our clients. And so working virtually, there's some great tools out there that you can use for collaboration. We use Teams, it's built into Office 365 and, and Office products. So the guys in the morning, um, you know, we have, a, uh, we have four or five different chat sessions. So they, one lets everybody know, hey, I'm online. You know, when they're stepping away for a few minutes or going to lunch, they put that in there so people know not to call people on, on the phone when they're away from desk or on lunch, et cetera. Um, so it just helps me keep track of our people up and, and working and what they're working on. Um, so we use Teams. We, um, we have three CX for our phone system, which has video conference capabilities. So we use that and we have our staff meeting via that um, so that everybody connects uh, on Monday morning. And then we have, uh, daily, um, they have daily bullpen sessions just with the text with the, the, the technical leadership um, so that they can uh, do ticket updates, make sure if they're asking for help, et cetera. So it's new. Um, one of our, our dispatchers, she doesn't have a high bandwidth. She had to get new. Um, uh, she was actually on DSL. I, I said that earlier and most people think nobody's on DSL anymore, but she actually was. And so she had to upgrade her internet service at home. She's out in uh, the west side of uh, Coweta County. Um, mm -hmm. But it's been a good experience for everybody, you know, learn how to stay in touch and over communicate, really just focus on communication. And I, I tell them, you know, we, if, when they act like family, I treat them like family. When they act like an employee, I'll treat them like an employee. So just over communicating like you would in a household that, hey, I'm going to be away. I'm not judging. I'm not counting your hours. Just do your job. Um, right. Some of them, a lot of them have, uh, four of them have kids at home. Um, so I understand that they have other responsibilities and, you know, they're trying to take advantage. This is a good time. I'm a family guy. So I get while you're home that with your kids, you need a, you know, a couple of different times. If you can get a couple extra hugs a day, that's a good thing. That's good for the family. It's good for your relationship with your spouse. You know, um, my wife and I have been working together here in this business now for 12 years and been married for over 30. So, you know, we, we tolerate each other at this point, but you know, it's good every once in a while just to have some time to, you know, go it's easier to grab lunch, grab five minutes, have a conversation about our daughter just got engaged. So, you know, now she's like, okay, when you get a break, let me know. I need 15 minutes to talk about this. So, you know, we can talk about those things. So um, really communication, the more spread out you are, the more communication uh, I think is appropriate. 
And I love it because it gets away from texting. Um, you know, use something that's collaborative that everybody can see. And so you can hold people accountable on uh, FaceTime and live phone calls. I've really been emphasizing live phone calls. Just pick up the phone to call people, get back to old school stuff that you know, uh -huh. worked for so long. That's great. Um, Josh, let me ask you, I know you uh, you started the B&I group in uh, Henry County and you're working with them in some different capacities. Uh, how do you manage that group at this point, uh, the way we are right now? Uh, kind of the same way. I actually just came out of one of the BNI meetings this morning uh, for the startup group that's actually beginning here. Um, and it's working on the Zoom platform. BNI globally is actually on the Zoom platform. Um, I, I think so far it's working great. Um, gives the ability for the members uh, to still do their jobs if they're essential employees. Uh, we've got several people in the trades and stuff like that, uh, and insurance and that sort of thing that are now able to work from either their office or their home. Um, so it's safer for them. It gives them more time back uh, in their business uh, because they're not having to commute and take time out for that. Um, and we're even, you know, making sure that they they're doing the, the where they would do one to ones and meet normally face to face to really get to know each other within the chapter. Uh, they're doing that virtually as well. So a lot of that's really hasn't gone away. Uh, it's just changed the platform instead of meeting at Starbucks or Queen Bee Coffee or wherever it is. Uh, we're just doing it on Zoom. Um, you know, we've also emphasized, you know, actually just looking out for each other. Um, I'm actually building a newsletter for them right now because, again, over, you know, over communication is something to do. Yeah. Um, and so trying to send out newsletters, video links, anything I can do to help them. But the realization that we're here, here to work together. Uh, if you're doing great, help somebody that's struggling. If you're struggling, reach out to ask for assistance. Uh, that's what we're here for, to work together and help our communities. So it's, it really hasn't changed much. We've just taken our live meetings online. Yeah. Right. Great. Uh, Taylor, you talked to us a little bit about the, uh, the teaching aspect of Connecting Henry, but um, just how about, I know you can't get out and see people the way you probably used to. So um, how do you handle that? Yeah, so I think that's really important. Just what the others are saying is over communicate with your team. Um, so there's four instructors at Connecting Henry. Um, so just being in communication with them, because again, this is new for us all. Google Classroom, I thought was going to be super simple, but it's way more intense than I think any of us ever thought. Um, so just reaching out to them and asking, hey, what's working for you? Do you have any ideas? And admit like you don't have all the answers either, because I reached out to a couple of the instructors and ask like, okay, well, how do I upload this? Or how can I make this more accessible for the students? But just communicating with them, asking them if they have questions and how can I help you? Because that's what Josh mentioned as well. So some, yeah. once I think of Google Classroom, um, I feel like I should be able to share that with the other instructors and be there for them and to help them. Um, but also establish deadlines for everyone to meet as well, like what Laura was saying. Um, because yes, we're all working from home, but we still have caseloads that we still have to manage and students that we have to reach out to and contact. Um, so even though normally we don't have like hard deadlines, it's just due at the end of every month, but let's break it up into two, like do half of your caseload um, in the first two weeks and the other half in the last two weeks, but establishing new deadlines for everyone to meet as well. All right. Yeah. If I yes, could one of the things that Taylor just said, we, you know, we talked about, we share a lot of information over communicating. One of the things from a technical side is, you know, people need to be cognizant of the information they're sharing. Um, you know, healthcare workers, HIPAA, financial services, and FINRA, there's a lot of regulations. And working from home, you know, those things come into play when people on their home network aren't, don't have the right uh, setup at home, whether it be, uh, you know, they may have to go out and get a, a commercial grade firewall so they actually can VPN. Um, or be connected so that their communication is encrypted or they had to add, um, you know, encryption to their email account um, because when they're in their office, they didn't have to do that because everything was within their firewall, but now they're outside their firewall and that information needs to be protected and encrypted. So from a technology perspective, knowing what information you're sharing and communicating, you know, Zoom, uh, there's been some stuff on Zoom, um, you know, some of these things can be hijacked and hacked, you know, yeah. make sure you're not sharing uh, you know, sensitive information, personal health information or financials, you know, in, in, a, in, in an environment or using a, a, a channel that could have risk to it is important. So you need to make sure you're checking with your employer because as, as, as the owner, you know, my intellectual property, I, I need to protect and we all have to protect our intellectual property. And then we also have to protect our patients, our clients 
information. So that's really important. A lot of people just think, oh, I'll just go home and I'll get on my kid's laptop and I'll, you know, start sending emails and, and that kind of stuff, you know, put stuff at risk. So they have to educate themselves on what their boundaries are so they can set them. That's great. It's a lot of things that uh, people don't think about. So uh, that's great information. Um, April, I'm going to come to you to start off our next question because you were just so good at this. Um, and it's just during all this that's going on, and we are going to have the webinar Thursday kind of about mental wellness, but how do you stay positive and how do you help encourage other people uh, while we're going through this? Wow, Gary, this is my favorite. So I know it. <laughs> everybody, everybody loves to receive encouragement. But what I've noticed during this time is when you're giving it, you cannot feel um, negative and anxious at the exact same time you're engaging in being encouraging and sending out positivity. Those two things can't dwell in the same place. So when you can, um, most of the people that know me, I've even had people call me up not knowing my name and they'd say, are you the card lady? Yes, I'm the card lady. <laughs> but I've always been the card lady. Before I ever found the company that I use for my tool is called Send Out Cards. And before I found that, I was a card sender. I was the one that never forgot a birthday. For 30 years, I've sent people cards. And still to this day, it's just, I've just sort of changed the way I do it. So now we have an app and a website. Anybody in the world can go on there if you have Wi-Fi. And you can very quickly, this is what I've been sending to people in nursing homes. So you can, on your phone, you can find this card and you can very quickly send someone a little note. You'll notice this is my Sunday school class, y'all. So I took a quick picture of my Sunday school class, most of whom have never Zoomed, and said, hey, if you're missing, we miss you on Sunday, and then there's a little word search. And so one of my realtor friends in Michigan has a top 100 list. So that's what we're all finding right now. Everybody on this screen, everybody who's an attendee to this meeting even, you need to find a unique way to love on your people during this time. They don't need another postcard that says, call me if you want to sell your house. Call me if you want another quote for this. They don't need that right now. What they need is a fun word search to make them think of you when that shot of dopamine happened and it made them feel better for a minute. And so a realtor friend of mine sent out a hundred of these in one click to the top 100 people that she wants to stay in touch with throughout the year. And in the card, she said, hope you're doing good. Text me the first word you find in the word search. Well, now she's got 50 or 60 text conversations going on with people that she wants to stay in touch with. And it took her like a minute. So it's a creative way to continue those relationships, nurture and love on your people. And it's, it's sort of a double, a, a double dose. You feel good when you send it, but then a week later when the person gets it, you get it again because they contact you. So when you can do things like this, and a lot of us, I know Josh, I've known Josh almost a year now, and we started off in a business relationship, but then I got to know him, I got to know his kids and that kind of thing. And so then when, when his, you know, he's got a family member that's having surgery and now we're friends on Facebook, I can send him, the kid, some brownies in the mail. Does that do anything for Josh? No, but you want to love on somebody, love on their kid. And so these are my kids. It popped up in my Facebook memories. And so I posted it one day and a friend of mine saw it on my page, pulled it off Facebook and mailed it to me. I didn't have this in print, but guess what? I know who sent this to me and that's who I think of when I see this picture. So you want to stay top of mind, make somebody feel good and Y'all, it's just all kinds of fun. I'm telling you, I, I probably have the most fun job of all. <laughs> That's great. I knew that would be perfect for you. Oh, uh, I just love it. April, love I on know your you people. Do. Just love on your people. <laughs> That's great. Uh, how about anybody else? How do you keep your uh, employees, your customers uh, encouraged? I know it's, it's hard for me because that was a big part of my job is going out and visiting our members. Uh, as much as I could, new members, you know, we try to go see members that, that aren't real active to try to get them encouraged to 
to be more active and to, to do more things. And, uh, and that's a tough thing right now. I can't go see anybody. Uh, so how's everybody handling that as well? I'd say keep the communication up. I mean, again, you can still meet people via Zoom. And those one-to-one -one conversations you would have at their business or at your business can still take place here yeah. virtually. Uh, pick, like Doug said, pick up the phone. Call them. Uh, like April said, love on your people. Uh, you can't, I, it's like anything. I mean, I'm in sales. I got to stay on top of what's going on with my clients. I mean, so I've always engaged them, not just when I, you know, I'm taking care of them and working on it, but friending them on Facebook, staying up to date, posting stuff, uh, reaching out to them with just a short message. Hey, everything going okay? You need anything? I just, so you stay on top of mind. And it's not about the, the sale, the next sale. It's just about being there for them. Right. Um, so I definitely reached out to my clients. I had a, a client that actually passed away uh, the other week and I could go online and order 1-800 flowers. I wasn't going to go to the funeral for safety's sake, right. um, but I absolutely could make sure that I, I reached out to him via phone after kind of things went down. We've actually talked yeah. several times since, uh, but I sent a flower arrangement out to the funeral. Um, so still doing what I could do to be there for him, even though I couldn't be there. Yeah, that's great. Great idea. Um, anybody else want to jump in? Well, fortunately or unfortunately for us, um, IT is um, keeping us very close to our clients. Um, we, um, they need us more now than ever. We're talking, you know, everybody's gone home instead of being in an office environment. A lot of them feel on an island. So um, one of my favorite movies is, uh, is um, Mr. Mom with Michael Keaton. And his um, kid had a whoopee. And, you know, I tell my guys, we are, we are our clients, Whoopi. We are there to make them feel warm and fuzzy and safe. So we waived all of our after hours rates. Uh, so if somebody's working from home and has a different schedule, I'm not going to be a profiteer off of the situation. So right. to just solve the problem, make them feel safe, make them feel comfortable. So we're actually getting a lot more touches or as many touches with our clients as we have in the past on an individual level because we're providing them that support um, when they need us. We're still there at the end of the phone to help them um, remotely. And um, so it, it's really allowed us to be to, uh, even more ingrain ourselves um, in the fabric of their business because they realize how dependent they are on what we do. And we've been very, we put over 700 people on remote support, remote access in two and a half weeks. We were working at 10 o'clock every night getting everybody you know, home when this thing really blew up. Um, and can't tell you how many, I've gotten probably as many thank you emails in the last three or four weeks um, for the way we've been patient handling them than I did in the first 10 years we were open. Wow. Um, and we got a lot, now, we've been very blessed. I mean, it's amazing how many people are just like, oh my gosh, I don't know what I would have done. Thank you so much. Um, you know, I'm, I'm going around and uh, picking up, so I still get to see some face-to-face. -face. If we have to do on-site support, I'm the one that's going out, so I don't uh, su um, submit my text to exposure. I got my, you know, my mask and my gloves, and I'll go pick up the hardware and bring it back here and let them work, and then I'll take it back and delivering it. So I'm still getting my FaceTime because I'm an extrovert as well, so it's allowing me to still get some one-on-one -on -one time with clients um, by going out and doing the face-to-face, -face and the guys are handling it remotely. So we've been very blessed in that. I think this is made our relationships even stronger with our clients. Mm -hmm. That's great. That's great. Um, I tell you, and, I, and we're going to finish up with this one, um, and we'll see if anybody has any other questions. I think y'all have done such a great job of, of covering everything. Um, but the last thing is kind of when all this is over, um, how is it going to change how we do business? Um, what's going to change about what we do going forward? And I'll start with this one because you know, one of the things I think this will really help um, me as a membership director of the chamber and, and the chamber as a whole, because one of our issues a lot of times is trying to stay engaged with those businesses that can't get out. They can't come network. Uh -huh. um, you know, they can't come to the lunches that we have. And, and this has just shown us that we have a way to get this information that we're providing to other members out to people that can't actually come out and, uh, and participate in those things. Uh, so I think moving forward, that's really going to help us a lot. Um, but who else has any ideas on, Laura, anything going to change with you when this is over as far as how you do business? 
Yeah, I think there's a lot of silver linings if we look for them. I mean, you know, everything from like personal goal setting, like I told, I told the other panelists, my goal for April is to have my email box cleaned out by the time I go back to normal life. So <laughs> ISNT will quit sending me hate mail about, anyway. Um, but I think that's one of the other silver linings is that this has given us a chance to see other people's perspectives. You know, I have a, I have a larger team that I work with at work and we have everything from uh, interns who are straight out of college to, um, you know, end of career type um, positions. And it's given us some interesting insight into each person's lives, um, you know, from the from a coworker who lives by herself and our Zoom calls twice a week are the only time she really gets to interact with people because she has an admin type role. Um, to, you know, one of my team members told me the other day, call your parents and grandparents, we're lonely. You know, those are the things that I never, I immediately hung up and called my grandmother. Um, <laughs> now I so feel I bad, it, I need to do the same. <laughs> yeah, I think it will, um, I think it will make us just more aware of, of people as people. Right. Amen. Josh, what do you think? Uh, you know, I, I don't know that, I mean, I guess a little bit. I, I'm licensed in 41 different states. Uh, so I've had to be virtual for a while now. Um, but I, I like the technology I've now been exposed to because of this, because most of it was just sharing a screen. I'd be talking to them over the phone, sharing a screen. So I think this is definitely going to be an opportunity for me to actually like I'm truly sitting next to my client. I mean, that was something I always explain before. I can show you, is, you know, you may be in Texas, but it's going to be like we're sitting next to each other in my office. Um, and so that was always there as an option. Uh, but I like the ability, and now that I'm kind of learning, you know, the virtual side with the video, uh, it's going to bring me even closer to my clients. Uh, so I'll definitely take that moving forward. Uh, I know, again, with like BNI and some different things, uh, there's different tools with this. We're going to, you know, for people that can't necessarily come visit meetings, because like you mentioned, Gary, they can't get out of their business. Uh, they're maybe in a trade where they're getting trucks out at a certain time. Uh, but this might be an opportunity for them to still engage in networking and stuff from their office so they can get their trucks out right. and still participate. So I think some of our meetings are going to go hybrid in that uh, sense for some of our groups where, hey, we're going to try to do everything face to face. But if remote is what you got, then hey, let's go with it. Yeah. Um, so. Right, uh, Taylor. As far as your like your GED classes, you think you'll continue to do more virtual stuff with those classes, or I don't know how much you were doing already, or will this change any of that for you? You think? Sure, actually on that one. I think we're still like in the very early stages to see if we even want to continue virtual classes. Um, I think it would be a great opportunity for students who don't have transportation or who work during the daytime, so they wouldn't be able to make it to classes. That's definitely something that we as a team are going to consider moving forward. Um, but if students, of course, can stay and come to classes, I do feel right now that might be the best options in terms of helping them get their education, but we are definitely open to doing things virtual for now on. But I think like overall, how this will change the way I do business is I'm going to make my interactions with my coworkers and anyone that I meet out in the community or just personal relationships more intentional when I yeah. meet with them or when I talk with them and really not take human interaction for granted anymore where I don't really know like what that's going to look like or what I mean by that but I don't want to be in a routine anymore where okay I come to school I teach during these hours I go to Kiwanis during this hour um, then I come back and I call some students here just to kind of check things off the list where now I want to do it as okay I actually really want to sit down and have a conversation with you even more than I did before and just make everything more intentional in life as a whole. Uh -huh. Hey, April, what do you think? I know you I kind do. of did everything already virtually. So. Right, but, and uh, I do. Um, so Send Out Cards operates globally. Um, we have affiliates in five other countries other than the U.S. Um, but what I want to tell folks is there's uh, the founder of our company wrote a book called The Power of Human Connection. That is what I'm hearing from a lot of you guys and a lot of other people, too. I can send that book out for free. It is no obligation to anybody whatsoever. It is a pleasure for us to be able to do that, um, to help people increase those human connections. And that's what I hope the world will take from this. 
enjoy this lull. Enjoy what we're doing right now. Look at what we're doing. When is the last time six of us from the chamber, other than just this quick lunch that we had to go do and that we, you know, and we sort of network for a little bit and real quick, but when's the last time we connected? And, um, you know, like I didn't even know how many kids Laura had, just met her the other day and, you know, got to meet Doug and I would have not known people a little more personally had we not had this forced lull. So I, I, my prayer for us as a community in Henry County and even further is that we will enjoy the um, lack of busy on our calendars and let's trade busy for productivity because sometimes you can be super busy but you're just the mosquito. Let's be busy like the honeybee is and be more productive with more quality at the end of the day, loving people a little bit better where they are. Um, you know, like a friend of mine is a missionary in Romania and look, Taylor, I was thinking about what you were saying. She's probably gonna come here soon with an orphan that she adopted from the orphanage in Bucharest. He's gonna need a GED. You know, so the connections that we're making now during this time that we may not have made, there's a reason why <clears throat> the, the web, the send out cards website in general has increased 1200% in page views during the pandemic. We have increased production of card sending 65%. And there's 40 people in Henry County that are affiliates with me that can help people start send out cards accounts. That has, it's doubled since the pandemic because people are searching for a better way to keep in touch. People can Zoom all day long and it's wonderful, but to walk to the mailbox and get something and go, oh my gosh, Laura thought of me today. It makes people just pause. And so mm -hmm. if I can encourage anybody, Take this lull as a gift and keep the good in this. Not that there's anything good about this pandemic. Don't get me wrong. But in every trial, there's something that we can all learn. So I'm praying that we will all breathe and enjoy the less busy. Mm -hmm. And then when it's time for us to go back out in the world, pick and choose the things that are really going to add to your quality of life. Mm -hmm. That's great. Uh, Doug, anything to add before we close it out? I think uh, for me, it's it's really going to be interesting. I think we will respond as a society depending differently depending on how long this lasts. Um, you know, if this goes on for a couple months, um, you know, there's a lot of people that are going to be impacted. You know, some businesses are booming, some businesses are struggling. Um, but I think it's you know we are a creature we are creatures of habit. So when people are home for three, four or five months and working from home and work all the kinks out and get it all figured out. And then it's like, okay, everybody out of the pool, back to work, go to the office and the highway starts filling back up. It'll be really interesting to see how people's patience um, responds when they're back caught in the gridlock going to Atlanta. Uh, yeah. People have been you know, asked to go back into an office and work. Those of us that work remotely are used to it. Nothing's really going to change. But those that we're office dwellers and now we're home dwellers and then are asked to be, you know, three months. If it's only a couple of weeks, you know, you know, a lot of spouses, I have some, uh, some people I work out with in the morning are Peachtree City police officers. And they said their domestic calls have gone off the charts yeah. uh, during this because people are now being forced to be at home together. Some of them are working that out amongst themselves and some of them aren't. Um, and so, you know, when people are forced to go back, some people will be, hallelujah, I get to go back to the office. And other people are going to be like, no, I kind of like where I am now. So maybe they're going to look at a career change or they're going to look yeah. up to what April said. They're going to think about, hey, I'm going to prioritize my life differently. So I think how long we're in this will, will dictate some interesting outcomes. Um, but, you know, people are going to get comfortable. And for us, from a technology standpoint, this, this technology has been around for years to be able to do this is people have been hesitant to do it. So our commercial office is going to start to shrink as people say, you know what? I can actually cut overhead by having my people work from home. And yeah. Those expenses to them uh, in some cases. So it'll That's be true. really interesting to see how, how this all plays out. 
Yeah, one thing I've heard a lot is pivot. There's a lot of people that are learning. We're learning right now what we can do without, and we're learning what was really, really important. And the word essential has been just <laughs> tossed around like crazy. Um, I am feeling like things are more essential than normal as my roots start to grow out. But, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, little, little things like that, you know, but still. Also, I want to tell, oh, there you go. And then we have office pets. So everybody that's attending this webinar may not know on the there's at the bottom of this there's a chat button on the right hand side the chat will pop up at the bottom right hand side of the chat are three dots you can actually click on those three dots and save this chat to your computer when it's over if you needed to see somebody's information or if you want to you know throw your link over there or whatever you can do that and then everybody in this webinar can save the chat later so it's super useful yeah, thanks, April. And April actually put information about the book that she mentioned in the chat as well. Um, well, we're kind of right at the end. We're almost at 11 o'clock. Um, I don't see any questions. I think we've pretty much uh, covered things people would ask. Josh has changed. He's gone somewhere else. I don't know where he's at now. <laughs> to he's the club. Just, I'm trying to have fun something. with it. That's you know, that was one of the yeah, things I, mean, I kind of want to finish up with is have fun with it. You know, yeah. uh, like Doug's got it. You're going to pet. Uh, I, my three-year-old will sometimes join me in a meeting. Uh, I do my best to keep them quiet or mute when I have to. Um, you can change virtual background, but have fun with it. I mean, it, it doesn't have to be all serious, um, uh -huh. you know, and you have to understand, you know, when you're having different meetings with people, the, the person on the other end, be understanding with them. You don't know yeah. what their situation is and what they're forced into be. They don't know yours as well. Um, you know, it could be where your kids are growing in the house and you're just, it's just you. And so you have no distractions versus somebody that's got little kids running around that you see kind of turning back around or constantly has to mute because there's a three-year-old screaming in the background. <laughs> um, so you have to be understanding with the people, but have fun with it. I mean, I use different Zoom virtual backgrounds uh, to have fun with it as well. Uh, this is the new matrix I just did yesterday. Um, I had another one for church because even our church is going to Zoom. Uh, so I had one for uh, special for Palm Sunday on Sunday. And so I try to keep changing up just to have fun with it. Uh, something different. It doesn't have to be stuffy. That's yeah. great. You're being great idea. Josh. You're All right. Well, we're going to finish up there. I want to thank each one of you again for joining us. I uh, just want to remind everybody again, the um, invitation's out for the webinar on Thursday about mental wellness with Amy Coons with Henry County Counseling Service. Looking forward to that. This is recorded, so we will get it out there as well. And um, if anybody has any questions we didn't get to, feel free to email me. I will forward them to whoever needs them. Um, everybody's contact information, they're putting it up on the uh, chat over there on the side. So I'll leave that up for a couple minutes as well if anybody wants to grab that. Uh, but at that point, we'll end right now. I want to thank y'all again for uh, for coming. All the comments I've seen have been great information. They really enjoyed it. Uh, so we'll continue to do these with uh, as many topics as we can come up with. Thanks again. Y'all make day. sure that when you put something in the chat, a lot of them are replying to all panelists. That means the only six of us see it. So if you want everybody to see it, you need to change it to say all panelists and attendees. Thanks. That way everybody right. can see it. Great. Thanks, April. And Brent, um, Josh, you need to text Brenda later and tell her how to change her background. All right. <laughs> she wants to be at the beach. <laughs> All right. Thank y'all. Y'all have a great day. I love it. Bye-bye. Have a great day, y'all. Thank you, everybody.